to most critics and reviewers, The Fault of Secrets is one of the most inconsequential stories within the show, and I can see how. I mean, like all other second episodes in the series, this one is a more business as usual story for the spin-off, but honestly, despite having its problems, I actually enjoy this episode. Andrew Baxter Vale returns to Earth asking for help, but as always can he be trusted? However, a second threat arises when a set of android guardians threaten to destroy anyone who would uncover the secrets in the vaults. As the battle between Sarah Jane, Andrew Vax and the androids reaches its climax, Rani has to save her mother Gita from being caught in the crossfire. The vault opens and the destiny of the entire Vale species is at stake. Is it too late to save them? One of the advantages of this episode is the continuity to the events of Series 3, therefore Androvax's return, but also Gita's encounter with Androvax and the Jadoon. It's nice that Gita actually comes closer to actually discovering Sarah Jane's saving of the world, but obviously her memory gets wiped away, but it was still nice to see her reaction to all of this. And it does raise a good question about what would happen if anyone they know, friends or family, do get involved in all of this. One of the things I liked about Prison of the Judoon was the character of Androfax, but I thought that maybe it was a bit unfair for the actor who plays him, since his character was more overshadowed by Elizabeth Sladen's acting. I didn't feel like he stood out, since most of the time he was inside Sarah Jane's body, whilst in this one, he actually has a lot more to do. He has the most story, so he's trying to redeem himself, and I actually wanted him to be redeemed. And there were times in which, dare I say, I actually felt some sympathy for him. Plus, I think it's nice for him to be in, to be in the different bodies of many humans, rather than just spend most of the time being played by Elizabeth Sladen, which is not a bad thing, but I think for a shapeshifter, he has the potential to appear in any form. While it does show how much of a complex character he has become, I still wasn't sure why he decided to double cross them at the last minute. Which reminds me, the Garen do good as ever, but I did think that Sarah Jane has no idea which side to choose. There are moments in which she wants to help, but other times she doesn't want to help. I just don't understand which side she is taking, which I guess could cause some questions whether they are playing good or bad in this episode. The episode is trying to make us feel moral to the idea, but it takes us in so many different directions we have no idea which one to choose. We do also get a glimpse of a growing relationship between Clyde and Ronnie. I won't go into more detail since that, that will play a much bigger part in a future episode, but let's just say it's a cute little moment. Plus, nice leap there Clyde. This episode introduces us to the Lions of Shade, aka Men in Black. Yes, I know they were actually introduced in the animated episode Dreamland, but for now, let's pretend that never happened, okay? Actually, I love these guys in this episode. The way they walk, the way they move, even the way they talk. Mr. Dread is probably my favourite character in this series. I don't know whether it was his acting or his sarcastic humour, but since he is an android, it actually works. He just makes me smile and laugh every time he speaks. I guess the highlight for me is Dread wandering up to a man in a van, tearing up the door and saying goodbye. Seriously, if I was in that situation, I'd run like hell. Mr. Dread is so cool and he means business. I can watch a spin-off show of just Mr. Dread and I wouldn't get bored. I especially love how they did the effects on the weaponry. Whilst they were effective in the animated one, they looked more like satellite discs more than guns. But these ones look so much like laser guns. This is just a little nitpick, but maybe they could have gotten much thicker lenses for their shades. It just might help hide their eyes a lot more. I guess one other thing I like about this episode is that there is no real villain. I guess you could say either Androvax or Dread are the real villains, but they're not doing it for their own need. Androvax is only trying to save his people, and the shades are just doing what they were programmed to do. But there's really only one big thing in this episode that I don't like. Unfortunately, that serves as a plot point in this episode. There's this woman called Ocean Waters who has met with the Alliance before, but the reason she's there is just so they can find the second piece of the lock, but also to get Gita involved in discovering that aliens exist. But basically, she decides to organize a group of alien findings. Okay, that's not a bad idea, but the main problem with that is the name. 
Apparently, they are called burps. You thought Linda from Love and Monsters was bad? Well, you haven't seen what this group does. Nothing. Whilst with Linda, we got time to know the group and the people who get involved. They had nice people, different warmth and wit personalities, and we buy into their reasons of why they're working together. These lot are just so boring and bland and, and unengaging. We only get one scene with a whole group, but the rest of the time we're left with Ocean and her friend Minty. Yes, I understand why it had to be there as a reoccurring joke and also a bit of humour, but here's the thing. It does work at first, but then it gets really annoying after a while. Plus, what kind of alien group calls them burps? If I had seen an alien, if I wanted to talk to someone about it, and if I came across a fly for burps, I would think twice before making a decision. If I had only seen the logo, I would have easily gone, but if I had to read the title of the group, I would just walk away and try not to look back. Plus I understand why Sarah Jane and the others had to pretend to hide the aliens, but I find it a bit unfair for Ocean, especially when Sarah Jane did disagree or beat down Ocean Waters at the end. Couldn't they have just had the shades wipe their memories or something or maybe get Unit involved? Something other than just beat them down. So yeah, this subplot was painfully unfunny and hands down depressing. But despite its problems, I really enjoyed this episode. The direction is well developed and the action storytelling scenes are, are very effective. I think the lighting and concept designs have been well thought out in this episode. Plus the CGI, while standard, I think it's the lighting which makes them stand out from being just plain fake CGI models. As far as storytelling and character driven stuff goes, this is actually not bad. It's one of those episodes which actually teaches you a lesson on maybe not all people are just stereotypical one note characters. In fact, if I may say so, I enjoy this a lot more than Prison of the Jidun. Feel free to put some shades on and experience entering the vault for yourself.